That's right, Victor Allen's New Look Sports, ladies and gentlemen, brought to you his own neo urban look at sports. Black man, rub his head and make a wish. That's the way they do it. It's Victor Allen. Get ready for sports now. Here's Victor. Yeah. Got my donuts and chicken. I'm all ready for this, man. I'm 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 thinking healthy. I want to put it up. I want to put it up. See, I think there's going to be a mistake with people with the uh, the sandwich battle. I think a lot of people are going to go into donut shops asking for chicken. There you go. <laughs> and we may have just started a new way. Right. That's it. Go well, into your <laughs> going to Yum Yums and asking for some chicken. <laughs> All right. All right. Welcome to the new sports, you guys. Hey, look. I know it's going to look like I'm co-telling Mario's subject, but I am co-telling his subject because I kept running across these articles, which is my primary story for today. Famously, notice I said famously, <laughs> accomplished <laughs> athletes indulged during their professional career. <laughs> meaning, <laughs> meaning that there's no question that they did. I think acceptance is the answer. But forget the, all that. I'm not getting into the politics, man, and all that. Wow. I, I'm trying to figure out, can we determine with the little information we know? Because all the powers that be that around them said, don't mess with them. Let them smoke. Did it help? Did it hinder? Or null effect? It always helps, Vic. <laughs> All right. We're going to find out. So we're going to go through a few athletes. Some, most have accepted. And then there was one who really got a lot of attention. It's almost like it was a poster child. I'm going to see if we can So let me just, I just want to make sure I'm clear on this. Yeah. What substance are you actually saying that these Indulged. Indulged it. We're about to get there. See, I, see, I want the setup. See, I got you. So when I get to the first one, then it'll, it'll be clear. Right. And I gave you a, a tip. I said, I'm coattailing your last subject. See, I, that was the whole trick. Okay. Should have been listening, man. Should have been listening. Uh, Chicken and donuts. Huh? <laughs> All right. So since Mario now knows, it's marijuana. And the title is called Weed Smoking Famously Accomplished Athletes. Uh -oh. So what we're going to find out is, did it make it a difference? Did it, 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 did it really push them towards fame or did it ha not have an effect? And some have not accepted. We're going to go down a few athletes mm. on here. Or if you want to call well, them. I'm ready, Vic. I've ready got my yeah, bowl loaded. And <laughs> you already, he's in Happyville, you guys. You know, he, Happyville. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's go to the first one because something was going on. I, listen, I'm going to say he's a double timer. There's a reason why. Arnold. A Schwarzenegger. The governor. <laughs> Yo, but first, bodybuilder, man. Bodybuilder, former Mr. Universe, Mr. Olympia between 1967 and 1980. Did the, and he was known. Yeah, and, and, I didn't know that. Yes. He made, did they knew he was smoking weed when he got elected the to same, the governor? Wait a minute. No, 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 no. We're talking about during the period of their height. He started yeah, up as a bodybuilder. But I mean, but that means he'd already been a weed smoker by the time he ran I for governor. Saying, all the people. I didn't know that. All the people around him was going like this. Let him alone. He's, that's why I'm saying, why am I doing this? What was more important during this time? Steroids? Yeah. Marijuana? Steroids. Steroids. Well, people always right. been getting high. Eric Griffin <laughs> points in from Facebook that Babe Ruth drank before the games. I I, I read the Babe Ruth drank during the game. Wait, let me say this. We're not trying to determine if they did. We're determining did it make them better, stronger, faster. But weed always makes you better. <laughs> so as I go down to each one, since we don't get all the information, and since we all are socializing around people i've been around people who of course you have too partaking when they're playing basketball at venice beach and going choose me did they jump higher well back then i didn't need you smoking weed while we were about to do some ball no, wait, wait, wait. so let me get to i'm this just first. saying that's shit you don't want to do before you smoke weed no, like fly a fighter jet no, no, no. I mean, I mean, after you smoke weed. I mean, there's just shit that ain't better with weed. Wait a minute. Let me, Juggling he's already chainsaws. We, we already indicted. It would also be negative. Let's get, on, let's, let's get to Arnold. So did Arnold benefit 
Did it help, hinder, or do you think it had a null effect? No effect whatsoever. I don't know. You look look at his. Let's take a look at his. <laughs> right. Let's, let's take a look at his penis in his shot. Mario, you know what? Can we see it? People are asking you to put that stuff I'm down. I'm trying to see whether dude, or not the weed dude. helped. <laughs> so let's put the penis. You know steroids I'm do looking not at help. So the steroids let they, they shrunk his nuts. You no, know, steroids do they not help. St- it is known. The, ter- the steroids <laughs> shrunk his genitals. And just the sheer horror of that <laughs> means he had to smoke some weed just to stay sane. We're going to go on to the next because Mario's focused I on. I want you to know, I put it right here. Vic, let me let me make this bigger. I want to make sure that you can see this. You want me to sweat? I want you to make sure you get this penis shot right in there they can see. Is this for the ladies? Take a look at Arnold's dick. Is this for the ladies? First you ask. No, not just for the ladies. Some <laughs> Men also are concerned with the dick. So all you men, okay, wait a everybody just look at Arnold's wait penis. Minute, wait a minute. Why do you get buck wild on my segment? <laughs> I thought it was buck wild. You're the one that put Arnold up here with a G-string in Let me here. go to the next. You're, you're terrible, I bro. I was say, what's the, you're the one who. Wrong focus. What? Focus. Wrong focus. I don't have nothing to do with this focus. <laughs> let's go to the next. Look at my okay. visual aids. All right, let's go to the next. Although this person has never really come out and said, yeah, there's been many instances like the situation where it was marijuana in his bag, and he said, "I don't know how it got there." So we're his just name say, is Mellow. <laughs> it's Mellow. So <laughs> did did Mellow benefit? Did it hinder? Did it have no effect? Just from what you've seen in his performance, and he's a scoring champion in the NBA. What I would say is that it made it probably affected his defense. It didn't affect his <laughs> offense negatively. It probably affected his defense because of his motivation. So let me and marijuana is known sometimes to affect your motivation, and Carmelo's uh, defensive motivation has been questioned at times. I will say this. Having met Carmelo personally, we met him, Vic. He's a nice brother, so I won't say nothing bad about Carmelo. I would hang out with him, and now that I know he might smoke some weed, Let's smoke some weed. Yeah, he'll hang out with you. Says, smoke so some he, weed. I'll bring the weed. So he's, he's going to say, so you're a brother that said weed. that I can't play defense. So let me put, do this. I said we'll put it, motivated <laughs> to play defense. We'll, we'll, I didn't say you can't play defense. <laughs> Nobody gonna, out there thinks he can't play defense. So we're we just gonna say put he really don't a, a play tag. that much defense. He's not Carmelo motivated <laughs> to play defense. Can, if, can smoke some marijuana, but it may affect his defense. It, it, I said it may affect his <laughs> motivation. <laughs> I okay. didn't say that. See, y'all try to put <laughs> important right. to pay attention to the way I say it. <laughs> Let me go to the It'll next. Affect his motivation. <laughs> Let me go to the next. You know, Jake the Snake Plumber, also investing in an operational or an industry of weed smoking, enterprising, Pro Bowl quarterback, 2005. From what you've seen of Jake on the field, did you believe? He could have done better or that it got him that Pro Bowl. He got him that Pro Bowl. He needed that weight, that weed to help him tolerate that <laughs> offensive line that kept allowing his ass to get hit. That's right. right. That's why the weed comes in, you know, when you're angry. If right. you're ever angry, like you're just mad. <laughs> right. <laughs> then you smoke some weed and you're cool. Okay. Got it. All right. Now, that's why I said before you box, you might not want to smoke some weed, but – it might be good before some football. Well, let's let's take it to that next <laughs> level. Let's go to the next. Let's go to Nick and Nate Diaz, UFC. Not only do they box, but I would hesitate to say that probably one of the brothers, specifically probably Nate, uh, he likes to have his uh, press conferences. <laughs> and he walks up, I'm smoking, before... Right well, he's there. trying to keep himself calm because he's got to kick some ass. Yes. So is this the type of sport you probably need some marijuana? Yeah. But would it slow down you, your... You use the weed when you not before the fight, right. after the fight, to calm down so that you can go be nice to your kids and your old lady. <laughs> but when you get ready to have a boxing match, you don't smoke the weed because you want to kick some ass. Okay. So you want to let the hostility mm. brew and stew and get all angry. and Right. You know, even though those of us who went to the more martial arts thing would say that gets in the way of your fighting thing. Okay. But I'm just saying, you don't need weed before the boxing match. I would, I would go 
that far to say that, Vic. I would say that they probably indulge more beforehand. <laughs> and totally yeah. opposite of what you're suggesting. So, so let's uh, let's, let's go. Let's, uh, go to, let's go to the next. Oh, okay. This is the one sport that I would sit back and say I probably would need it. Ross Reba Gliata, snowboarding gold medalist in Nagano in 1998. He's also investing in the weed enterprise. Got to do it. I'm investing, Vic. How would it <laughs> probably feel to him that things are moving slower as he's snowboarding, <laughs> going down, doing his thing, and he says, you know, I need to slow it up or speed it up. Do you feel that it helped? Hindered, no effect. Well, state dependent learning, Vic. So snowboarding, you know, again, I can't see how marijuana can actually help you. I would think it would tend to hurt you, but I can tell you that many a person smokes before they go snowboarding down the hill. And so I myself would never smoke weed before skiing or snowboarding or anything like that i would <laughs> right right never right. do that myself Vic, but right right i've heard yes, of yes. people who allegedly see it listen indulge in such i'm really trying to allegedly my, i say Vic. I'm, I'm imagining how many people go out there because you know they're going out there going like this man i had my morning breakfast i'm going downhill so what you're saying is that if you go out on the hill <laughs> right to ski or snowboard yes that a certain percentage yes. of those people may be under the influence yes. of marijuana. And it may help them. Ooh. <laughs> there we go. All right. Ooh. Let's go to the next. Ooh. Let's go to the next. I think I know the answer to this question. Matt Barnes. I hope so. <laughs> NBA champion. I hope so. He needs something to calm his ass down. <laughs> Wait a minute. He's getting involved, I believe, also. But he's one of those people who's outspoken about it. And says, yeah, he hey, need look. to. <laughs> Chill out. Damn. What? what are you trying need. to say, bro? We probably kept him from getting... The weed has probably kept his ass out of jail. <laughs> what are you saying, that? He would be in jail right now were it not for marijuana. <laughs> well, let me say this. he don't know how to act. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to leave that one alone. Matt Barnes probably over here talking. What are you talking, Mario? So, let me ask you Keep this. it chill, Matt. There are some Let's people... Let's weed. Who need to calm down. Yeah, he need to calm. So that helped him on the court, you believe? Probably. Without it, he would be a wreck? I think that some people, they have to rein it in even when they're performing. In that case, it may be helpful. Okay, I got you. All right, let's Give go. it up to Matt. Matt, yeah. come on by. <laughs> come on by. I'll, I'll, I'll provide the weed. <laughs> right. I Listen, will just take some pics. These are unofficial I'll opinions. Take some pics. So you just know. We have I just no know your data. ass need to chill, but I said my ass need to chill. So I, uh, I'm going I to go know. to the person who I thought got undue attention, who really became like the person. Undue child. attention yes. or just do attention? No, undue. Undo? No, because see, I'm not getting into his personality and okay. his odd beha- behavior. Okay. I'm going. Wait a minute! All these people, all these athletes were indulging. He decides that I'm gonna be a little bit out about it in his opinion. And boy, did the media go after him! They Rick, did. Ricky those Williams. were in the early days yes. of weed darkness. <laughs> right. The they, weed early dark days. Yes. And he's enterprising as well. So you have a lot of athletes who are now investing in the operation and production, and. Of course, legitimately. So it's amazing how all of a sudden, what once give it up for Ricky. Got to give it. Give it up for Ricky. Surprise, Ricky. All right, Ricky. Okay, so let me say this: (laughs) out of the athletes, without going all over them, that we just selected, who do you think was the best performer of that group? Who said more, Ricky? (laughs) Ricky was. He was. They were just messing with him. Give it to Ricky. Ricky. I'm going to say Arnold because he got to take steroids and marijuana. Well, you know, as I, as I showed you before, we showed his penis. <laughs> so you take your own. Some of you, I must admit, in the interest of muscle building, you're willing to sacrifice the penis. I, I'm stopping. Not the, really the black ones. Right. I, but I, I'm just saying, but some of y'all are willing to sacrifice the penis. Okay, I'm leaving As alone. Vic... About his own personal choices. When he had the chance to use steroids, it was Vic that had to decide about his penis or the steroids. And Vic, I just want to applaud you now. 
I'm not making the right I'm not, choice. Listen, I'm not switching the camera. You made the right choice, Vic. <laughs> I'm not switching the camera. You, it was either your penis or the, or the steroids, Vic. I'm going to the next subject. <laughs> I'm going to the next subject. Okay, this is called historical moments that probably will transcend your lifetime in such a way that it's to me more of an acknowledgement more than anything else. The magic barrier as it relates to the marathon is two hours. I wish I can tell you the whole story of Iliud Kipchoge. They did a special run where he was the first man over the weekend to go under two hours. Let me tell you how good he is. They staggered world-class athletes to run with him as pace setters by himself, not against. And they, at periodic times, would peel off and the next group would come on to pull him down to the uh, the world record. When he came in from the world record, let me just tell you guys, this guy is 34. He has gray coming in his hair. All I can tell you is this. I've watched marathons where they end off at the race. They typically are waiting for you to put the wrap, give you a pat on the back, keep you held up because you won and you're exhausted. This guy came in the last two miles smiling. Not only did he smile, as he came in, he was pointing like he's at a concert, fluffing his chest, pulling down his eyes, going, you see me, you see me, when he ran across the line. He ran straight to a woman. He didn't need anyone helping him out. Hugged them. He's going, yeah, they're lifting him up in the air. He grabs the flag, put me down, and starts running the other direction to go slap and give dap to the fans. This athlete is the greatest marathoner of all time. There's no one, he is the Hussein Bolt, where there's nobody close to him because they can't pull him. So they had to do this race because none of these athletes can start with him and stay with him. He leaves them so far behind, it's ridiculous. So please go check out Ilyu Khashoggi. He kind of looks like you in this picture, Vic. Which one? Is that you in the back? <laughs> yeah, right. It looks like you, Vic. <laughs> That's wrong. That's wrong. It's not right. you. Hey, look, look, look. Like I'm, look. Lie if you lie if you must. I'm just saying, it like, kind of looks like Vic to me. All right. Over the same weekend, highlighting the greatest gymnast of all time, who broke the all-time record with 24 medals, and that is something that stood since the 1990s as Simone Biles. This is just giving recognition where recognition is. Four feet eight. Yay! 20, 22 years old. She, the record was held by v Vitaly Sherbo of Belarus back in the 90s. She's going to go to, of course, the, the Olympics and probably has, at this age, maybe, I don't know if Look she'll... Look at those thighs. I don't know if she'll be doing this for another four Lord. years. Lord. Look at those thighs and Unquestionably, hips. the Lord. greatest at this, of all time, Lord. until someone comes later. So I want to give that little Good shout out again. just to say, hey, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, some fast notes now. I'm doing some fast notes. The Antonio Brown rot watch is over. <laughs> so we ain't got no comments on it. Although he wants to get back in. Yeah, we were watching, all right. Yeah, it's over. It's done. Next, I hate to say this, Girly Town ain't doing too well. Yes. Well, the whole team ain't doing too well. Yeah, but you take out the leading rusher in the NFL or the best rusher, at least tied for first. Ever since he's been injured and now he's removed and he didn't play in the last game, they're just honing in on, on Jared Goff. And the Rams are not being able to protect and they're not the team that you thought they were. And this includes also the, low, the uh, lack of performance in the L.A. Chargers. Both teams are suffering. It's just amazing. It just happens to be when you come to L.A., <laughs> You get performance <laughs> issues. Right. Just saying. Yeah, it's not Of course, good. not Vic or I. Right. No, it's not. But other lesser men, yes. Right. There, there you go. All right, so I just wanted to give acknowledge. I also have a, my top five NFL teams for this week based on how they perform, not for the whole season. I got New England number one. 49ers I put up to number two because they look ferocious. Houston Texans because they defeated Kansas City. I kept Kansas City uh, at four. I think. Still think they got it. And then I got Seattle and Green Bay tied. So that's my top five for this week. And uh, literally just going, hey, if you guys need data, you want to go to the new new sports link, I'll, I'll put it out there where you can see 
the top quarterbacks and the performances they're doing. And it's literally, it's still Patrick Mahomes and Matty Ice of ATL. How can a team lose so much? And he's always performing. That shows you the real value of statistics, Rick. (laughs) Right. It's terrible, man. So, I, you know, I just wanted to give an acknowledgement to it and then sign off with what I call, <sighs> you served us well, Clayton Kershaw. I'm not going to pile on because, of course, the Dodgers got shocked. Even if they made it through the first round of the playoffs, because of Kenley Jensen not performing as well and Clayton, it was just a matter of running into the inevitable. This is not the same pitching force that they were the last couple of years. But Clayton, three-time Cy Young Award winner, I'm going to give you your props. Look, they're going to beat him down and say, look, he should have never been in the position he was in. But when you pay a cat that much money, he's going to be in that position. So I'm just giving a shout-out to the Dodgers. Hey, look, there'll be some moves next year. Guaranteed. It's got to be. Mario, you got anything going out? Monday Night Football, anything soccer, Cocos? <laughs> I'm going to be there for Monday Night Football, Vic. What is it going to be tonight, Vic? Probably a Green Bay team. That's probably probably it. Maybe a Green Bay. Maybe not. Who cares? We're going to wait until we get close to the playoffs. So I'm out, man, my new, new sports. That's right. Victor Allen's new, new sports, written and directed by the bald-headed black man. No way he does it. Be here every week because it's a recurring segment of the Morning Coffee with Mario's show. Dress appropriately. Sports bras and jock straps. We don't want you to chafe. Bring your own foot powder. It's going to be sports, damn it. Be there. Sports. New, new. Not the boo boo. And the woo woo. Sometimes the hoo hoo.